All right guys, my name's Ben. I'm a 21 year old student from the north coast of Ireland uh, and this is my van build. This content is sponsored by Outdoorsy. Through Outdoorsy, you can rent your camper van out to make extra cash and you can rent a van to try van life before you commit. So it's a VW Crafter, medium wheelbase, and I've spent around the last year converting it into a tiny home on wheels. I started off with sort of no real experience. I'm an engineering student, so I'd always loved sort of hands-on work, and that was where it really came from. I went for a fairly decent sized kitchen, uh, a smaller bed and a shower. As you can see, I framed off the bulkhead, um, which was a decision I made early on to sort of make the main body of the van a bit more cosy, um, rather than keeping the, the cab open. So yeah, I did that and obviously cladded it with uh, just white cladding. I sort of went for that white sort of colour scheme uh, just to keep the, the van, as it's a smaller van, um, keep it a bit more open, a bit more airy. Um, and I thought it just, it just looked good as, as a colour scheme. I've got a small sort of window here into the cab as a, an extra bit of light um, as I only have the one window in the van and the skylight. Up here, uh, I built a shelf in the cab. I did a bit of art underneath it just to make it a bit more interesting. So that was sort of one of the first things I did in the van. Got plenty of storage up here for sort of clothes. Um, got a hammock in there, towels, all that sort of thing. Sleeping bags, whatever. Next, uh, as you see, I've got a projector screen up here um, so this folds right down you have to take the, the shelf off and then I have a, a projector in there to make a sort of mini home cinema. We're moving on to the kitchen area I've got a fairly decent sized sink just a, a sort of home uh, kitchen sink with a home tap I decided to go for the actual house tap just because of the look of it really and also you have the extra size to get a bit more water in there as well. I went for a two burner induction hob instead of the gas just for sort of safety reasons I didn't really want gas in my van just so I could, I could relax a bit more really. So that was one of the things I decided early on in the van that I didn't want. Underneath here I have my water system, but basically I have a 70 litre Fayama fresh water tank, which you can fill from the side. And that runs into a 30 litre gray water tank. And then I have a bin under there as well, which is pretty handy. Here I've got storage, kitchen storage, extremely messy at the minute. There's my projector in there. And then in the bottom cupboard, I don't know if you can see, but I have a water heater in there. Uh, so it's an electric water heater and it has a 700 watt element so not not too big a power draw fairly one of the bigger ones but sort of usable for the water heating element and again it's electric and not gas so that was one of the big things that i had to think about i had to do a lot of research about over to this side we have a full size shower i'll get in here got my wet set up so it's pretty good size it's essentially the length of the bed a very kind guy named Tom made this shower pan for me, which is a custom through a medium wheelbase, a sprinter, a crafter. I kind of built the rest of the van around that because it was a set shape. So that was one of the first things I did was put the, the shower pan in and build a frame for the shower. I panelled that off, framed it off um, with these uh, waterproof cladding. They're about this wide um, and they just slide into each other and they're waterproof, which is really good. In terms of the shower head, it gives great pressure. It uses air and water, so it saves a lot of water as well, which is obviously essential in uh, van life. I've got the window here, quite a small window. Got a nice view there as well. So that's one of the main sort of sources of light in the van. One of the first things you do is putting that window in. Above here, I've got a 28 centimetre by 28 roof vent, which opens pretty simple there's no fan or anything just wanted to save on, on price wise which is maybe one of the things I change in the van um, but you live and learn going on to the bed so I've got a slightly larger than single bed it's not too bad for me and then I have uh, the overhead cupboards here this is another thing that I might possibly change there's not a lot of room in the bed which is which is okay i don't mind but if i was ever to rent it out or, or anything like that uh, i'd either have to make these smaller or, or take them out completely in terms of the mattress i got this custom made just foam from a company in england and that was great and it's comfy enough so it's all good we have this bench seat here and this pulls right out it's great for sort of sitting and chilling. Uh, it's not quite big enough to sleep on, maybe for a sort of kid's bed or something like that. So again, with this, uh, I just bought the foam and then a fabric and just sort of stapled that, stapled the fabric onto the foam. Inside here, we've got plenty of storage. And I've also got my 30 litre fridge um, from Dometic. Can keep food, beers, all cold. 
So that was a bit of a, uh, an expense, but just for the sort of efficiency and low power draw that it has, uh, I thought it was worth it. Also plenty of storage in there for wetsuits, whatever you need it for. And then that just slides right, right across. And then I also have a pull-out table here that pulls out for eating your dinner, extra worktop space. And this pushes right in uh, when you're driving and it stays in really well. And then you've got the extra space, which is pretty valuable in a medium wheelbase van. So then here we've got a bit of extra storage. One of the things I haven't done yet is put sort of shelves on here so you can put shoes, um, just, just more storage, just trying to use as much space as you can, which is a really vital thing in, in a smaller van. I've got my switch for the inverter, so I'll take you around the back and I'll show you the electrics, what size of inverter I have um, and that sort of thing. It's a bit windy, but it's all good. We're in Ballantoy Harbour on the north coast, on the Causeway coast. I think Game of, Game of Thrones was filmed here, so um, it's a great spot to have this so close to home. This is the electrical setup. Uh, you can see the bench seat in there, so i have push that forward actually. Working from the battery, I went for a 220 amp hour battery. Potentially might need a bit more, uh, just because of the, the induction cooktop and the water heater, which are all quite uh, high power consumption. But I'm just sort of learning as I go along, really. I've got this connected to the Rover 40 amp charge controller from Renergy. That's then connected to the solar panels that I have on the roof. And I went for 400 watts of solar, which is pretty essential in uh, the not sunny island of Ireland. I've got space for surfboards down this side, which is handy um, for, for traveling around Ireland, hopefully doing a bit of surfing. These were pre-wired around the van which is one of the first things to do and it, it sort of took a lot of planning and stuff like that to, to see which electrical appliances will go where. So there's a lot of planning before you even build the van, which takes up a lot of time. Yeah, so I'll bring you back around to the front and talk to you a bit about the insulation that I used. So I went for flatter panels to the roof on the sheet metal of the van. I used a 50 mil a Celtex board and then in the smaller cavities, I went for a, a sheep's wool insulation which has worked really well so far. I haven't used it during winter yet, so we'll see about that when, when, when we get there. And again, vapor barrier has stopped any condensation, which is great in the winter months as well. Yeah, I went for this color scheme. Uh, so I went for the blue, uh, it's a flower and ball uh, pitch blue color. When I made these kitchen cabinets, primed them and then sprayed them with a fence spray, which actually worked pretty well. That's pretty much the van. Um, I hope you've enjoyed me talking you through how it works, how I built it, and sort of what went into building it. So I'd love if you could give me some support over my Instagram, um, at Life of Riley Van Life. And again, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you soon. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you hadn't noticed, we do sell an ebook for how to convert a van. It has over 190 pages of detailed instructions and diagrams, also 25 video tutorials which are specifically for the ebook buyer. Creating a van for many people is obviously a really intimidating project, but I really believe, and I've seen it time and time and time again, that with the right information, anyone can turn out with a pretty decent van conversion. So check the link in the description, subscribe to the channel if you are not already, uh, and drop us a comment if you like this video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.